I figure we can entertain our guests with a story before daytime comes, and you are more than welcome to go after this, but I would hate for you to leave if there were to be wolves or anything of the sort. Oh so my. please. No, I don't mind listening to a story. In fact, I'd love to hear a story. Hmm. Of course. Have you ever heard of the story of creation? Saffron. Ah, uh, not the native story. No. Oh, well, which story are you familiar with? Ah, uh, the one found in Genesis. Ah, uh, I see, I see. The good old Bible. <laughs> Aye. I, there was a man who also told me of a story of creation of his, a good friend of mine from many moons ago. He was, um, his story of creation was different, but somehow very familiar. So maybe you might find a familiarity as well with this. I perhaps. The story of creation is different from many of different tribe kin. Hiro and his parents and ancestors believe of many things. And as do mine. But they both have a great beauty amongst them. A story of the great Manitu, a great creator. But Juge's people tells the story as such. There was once an emptiness. Brought together by the death of Orkitan. Kitan is the old god, one who lives many years. After his passing, his spiritual energies went to many places of manifestation. His mind, his thoughts, as bright as they were, created a great light. This great light then became Yotanit, the great fire. And this great fire burned so bright and illuminated the darkness that eventually it became so hot, filling Sitting up the void spitting. Hey, Jay Brands. that it began to cool. But the great mind and the ideas of Kitan still existed with inside of this darkness. The Yotanit became Kisakwan, the god of the sun, the great spirit. The great Manitu, formed from the husk and the body of Kitan, reached out towards the great spirit of the sun and took it upon his hand. He looked upon it with such mesmerant. This great thing burned so bright to fill this darkness. But there's nothing for it to warm. So he reached inside of his great hide sack and pulled out what would be the very earth to which we stand. A great clay as he formed and spent many moons, many days forming this into a shape and they lay it at rest. He took the great gift of the sun. And he pushed it ever so gently to travel in a great circle around this great clay. And as the sun rotated around and began to warm the clay, 
giving it a form to what it has been shaped into the soil beneath our feet as it began to harden. But the great Manitou looked upon it and noticed, and there was no light on the other side that this great sun would disappear and leave the rest of the world in darkness. So he took from the great earth and mailed it another greater bow. And he pushed that one opposite of the sun, traveling amongst the same circle. This was the moon, Nandi Prashat, the great moon spirit. A great cycle was made as he blew onto the earth. He created the winds as it span all around, polishing the great clay beneath our feet. Uh, I think there's the a great deal. Manitou grew weak, as much of his strength creating the world, weird his soul and his spirit. So he went down to his creation. knowing of the old god who has sacrificed himself to create him and the others. He knew that he had to give himself to what he had created. So he reached inside of his great sack and he pulled out many a things as the great winds blew he became parched. He looked at his creation and saw beauty and began to cry. And his tears became the ocean and the rivers. He pinched from the earth, pulling up trees into which he populated with a gracious amount. He carved out mountains and valleys with great footsteps, great pushings of earth and water. And for many moons, All right. yes. he created his masterpiece. The great Benito saw that he had the trees, the sun, the moon, and the earth, and the earth underneath him. But there was nothing there, nothing to explore his great gift. So he went and reached deep into the clay of the earth, into the soil. And he formed many things, many things with four legs, things you may know, such as horses. <laughs> that was the first wolves. thing that came to mind, was horses. <laughs> and I figured you have a good bond with yours, I figured this would make the most sense to you. <laughs> but he made the great turtle, the deer, the salmon, and all the creatures that populate the earth. And he made a great council with these creatures. And he told them, enjoy my gifts. Enjoy these things here for you to live and team from. And if you are in need of me, I am only a prayer away. These were the great gifts of the creator, of the all spirit, the great Manitou. And he arose to his heavenly plane where he resided with the other spirits. Asakuke, the snake spirit. Wabasak, the eagle spirit, who watched over the land and skies. Kisakwand, Nashapat, Pamakawisit. These are the gods of sun, moon, and the sea. And they watched as the creatures thrived. 
Many moons have passed. And Galula, the great thunderbird, passed over these plains, passed over the mountains, the sea, brought great rains. But many of things. But he questioned the great Manito. Why is it that the rest of the creatures below have so much to take, but not have anything to give? And a great communion with the spirits had occurred. But to the great surprise of the Thunderbird, many of the people, or should I say the creatures, below thought the same. There was the great salmon or rose from the great river and spoke to the deer and the deer spoke to the moose and the moose to the hawk and the hawk to the cougar saying that this was needed to be fixed well, who are we not to give so a great council was made and as for communion with the great Manito great Manito came down and spoke with great creatures, asking them for what is it that they may need, and they explained their plight. The Manito was baffled. Why would you want to give something when you have so much? The salmon raised its fin high into the air and spoke to the Manitou. We would like to complete the cycle, great creator. You have given us so much. We have taken much in calling this place our home. Will you give us the great gift for us to be able to give to complete our cycle? The great Manitou pondered upon this and thought to himself that he would grant the great gift to these creatures. So the great Manito reached down into the deepest, darkest parts of the great pond and pulled out a great mud and put it in front of the rest of the creatures. Mud? Mud. And he said, from what I create from this, what are you going to give? The great many to ask the creatures. The salmon raised its fin first. I will give my body to what you create to sustain it as long as it keeps my waters safe and honors the great spirit of the sea. Many of the creatures hesitated, hearing the salmon's great commitment to the great Manitou's gift. The great Manitou began to pick up the mud, looking to the rest of the creatures. The deer spoke next. I will give its sinew and my antlers and my bones for it to protect themselves. The bear said, I will give them my pelt to keep them and their babes warm during harsh winters. And as each creature spoke, the great Manitou picked up more of the mud and began to shape it. By the time the creatures had done spoken, the great Manito was done. And in front of them was man. As long as men were to honor the great spirits and their gifts they had given to the creatures, and for the great gifts of the creatures to give to them, the hawk would continue to drop feathers from the sky for their arrows to strike true. 
they would be able to eat and feed off of the creatures, as long as they treated the great lands and the great creator's gifts with great respect and honor. We sit here now, we're in the fire to tell you the story of creation for our people. Maho. Oh. Well, thank you for telling me. That was good to hear. I'm glad that you enjoyed the story. Thank you for the company. <laughs>